at the outset we would request you to subscribe to this channel it will be a great way of supporting us we have learned in the previous fourth episode that at chitta vritti nirodha or in the state of yoga the person remains or dwells in his true conscious nature and we have concluded the episode with a question and the question was what is the harm if you don't do chitta vritti nirodha if you don't restrain the mind from its preoccupations through the senses what is the harm the answer of sage patanjali is vritti sarupya mitaratra in brief it means that the seer or let us say simply the person remains inseparably identified with the vrittis as usual let us analyze the constituents of this sutram for a better understanding vritti sarupyam and itaratra are the two words between which vritti sarupyam is a compound of vritti and sarupyam so we need to understand the meaning of each of these words to find out the gross meaning of the sutra let us take one after the other beginning with vritti we had discussed the word vritti in detail in the third episode let us recall it here vritti is really the shortened form of pravritti in scientific parlance the field where a sense organ is engaged is called its vritti so if someone says vritti kala it refers to the period of engagement and if somebody says vritti desha then it means the place or field of such engagement if further simplified the activities or engagements or preoccupations of the chitta or the mind is chitta vritti so the word vritti stands for chitta vritti therefore vritti sarupyam refers to chitta vritti sarupyam now what is sarupyam sarupasya bhavah sarupyam the state of being sarupa is sarupyam if so what is sarupam samanam or similar or indistinguishable rupam or form is called sarupam this also shows the difference when we say they look similar it itself is an affirmation or assertion on their difference now we know what is vritti and what is sarupyam then what would be the collective meaning of vritti sarupyam vritti sarupyam means vrittya sarupyam or similar to that of the chitta vritti or the activities or engagements or preoccupations of the chitta or the mind is vritti sarupyam it can be further simplified as vritti samana roopa bhava the state of being or the condition in which the seer or the person who sees remains similar to the form of vritti or mental modifications now what is itaratra the word itaratra is a comparative term that refers to one of any two things or topics generally it stands to mean the latter or the remaining of two alternatives what are the two alternatives between which the latter one or the remaining one that the word itaratra refers to we have already seen that there are two alternatives the first one is chitta vritti nirodha when the activities or engagements or preoccupations of the chitta or the mind are restrained or controlled when the senses remain withdrawn and no more perceptions are allowed in 
otherwise the state of yoga and the second one is when there is no chitta vritti nirodha or when the activities engagements or preoccupations of the chitta or the mind are not restrained are not controlled and so the senses remain active between these two the word itaratra refers to the second one the result of chitta vritti or not doing chitta vritti nirodha is that we inseparably identify ourselves with whatever we see hear smell taste and touch which will take us far and far from our true nature sight of something fascinates us and something else may drive us away from it while a piece of soft music can be relaxing excessive noise would be disturbing similarly the fragrance can make you pleasant while the foul odor can be repulsive same is the case with sweet or bitter taste or the soft velvet touch of a flower or the painful tone sensory influences tie us down for example imagine a particular image of a belief system such as a flag or a holy book a holy symbol or sounds or words associated with it which we hold so close to us it influences us so much that any negative remark made on it by anyone else may enrage us ideally we should have been living in this oceanic chaotic worldly experiences never getting wet yet floating on so elegantly like the lovely lotus and the key to the chest of happiness contentment and choice should have been in our hands we should have been the passenger whose chariot is well built and maintained led by an expert charioteer who knows for sure the path ahead where the horses have to be directed using the reins when the person is steadfast in yoga he remains in his true nature and at other times when the mind is preoccupied through the senses the mind remains modified and the person identifies himself one with his experiences just as the reflection of the moon in the water it seems to be moving in the waves and becomes steady when the waves cease that is the mind consider that clean and calm water as your mind and the moon reflected in it your true nature the ripples created in it are the outcome of the vritti as a result of which we don't get the clear image of the moon or our true nature now what is the extent of this false identity this false identity has wider consequences in our daily life for example we have learned in the previous fourth episode that we are not the body on the other hand we have a body which is a tool for us to live in and do many things now imagine the person identifying whatever belongs to him such as the body his clothes his house family friends vehicles the language he speaks the locality he resides in the state he is a citizen of and the planet itself everything belongs to him but they are not his true nature yet we identify ourselves with them too much that any associated factor can affect us so much as a result we are affected by the changes on the body our favorite dress and our house a minor scratch on our vehicle will be painful we race with others and get enraged a reference to our family friends the language the religion the state and everything else that we are attached to are capable of creating ripples in our mind as a result of which we plunge deep into the chaos of this world oblivious of our true nature these are the results of 
identifying ourselves with chitta vritti and that is the essence of the sutram vritti sarupyam itaratra now there is a question if chitta vritti is the cause that is obscuring our true nature which indeed has to be controlled what is the nature of this chitta vritti can we count them can we classify them so that we can be aware of them in our day to day interactions as a result we would be in a better position to restrain them sage patanjali answers vrittaya panchataiya klishta klishta vrittaya panchataiya klishta klishta the preoccupation of the mind through the senses are fivefold a few of them are klishta painful or distracting or disturbing or counterproductive and the others are aklishta not painful or distracting in short the first kind of the vritti causes our true nature to remain obscured that is capable of entangling us further and further in attachment and identity with the paraphernalia all the miscellaneous tools that whatever we are actually not and the second kind of vritti are not so painful or distracting or disturbing or counterproductive yet we must take note that they are also chitta vritti that need to be restrained that is the reason why the sage patanjali did not call them pleasing instead he said not so painful what are these five fold chitta vrittis that need to be restrained and sage patanjali says pramana viparyaya vikalpa nidra smrutaya let us learn this in the next episode please stay tuned by subscribing to this channel your subscriptions will be a great help and encouragement also please share it among your friends